focus on cloud, location, data center, industry, trends, the dynamic market. Hi, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I'm here with Andy Stewart, CEO of Evoke Data Centers, and Peter Rosakos, CTO of Foghorn Consulting. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thanks for joining. Glad you're here. Thank you for having us. Excited for the conversation as well. Andy, I want to start with you. We spoke about a year ago. In fact, I think it was right around the time that the pandemic was starting and things were really starting to change. It was also really interesting for you because it was just about the time or, or uh, a few months after you had taken over as the leader of Evoke. So you you have a year under your belt and there's obviously some things that have uh, exciting things that have been happening. But talk about what the last year has been like and what you have taken away from this last year as the leader of Evoke. Yeah, it, uh, it's been a crazy year for sure. Taking over right as the pandemic, people were starting to really truly understand that the impact that it was having on um, on their lives, on on business, uh, and doing that uh, to try to you know meet your team when you're doing everything remotely and trying to kind of build a culture and understand what's going on. So it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind for sure. Uh, a few ups, a few downs. I think that. Uh, what's got me really excited is that we have a much more clear focus on where we're going and what we're going to be doing um, over the next several years. I've had a chance to bring in some really talented senior executives to kind of round out the team, uh, new sales leader, new chief uh, uh, administrative officer and general counsel. Um, we've kind of revamped almost the entire sales team as well. So it's been, it's, it's been a, it's a crazy year for sure, but I feel like we're in a much, much better shape going forward than, than when I took over. So I'm excited for that. I bet. And I bet, you know, you get a year down the road and so much uh, to your point has changed. And it looks like, and at least from our perspective, seems like you all have made a lot of progress. So congratulations on that. Uh, Peter, thank you for joining us as well. I'd love to get uh, your background in the space. And, and obviously you have significant focus on the cloud side of things. And so I just love to hear how did you get into the data center industry and tell us about what you and the Foghorn team are doing? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, our journey sort of started during the dot-com 1.0 days of so mid-90s. We had a consulting company that was acquired by Exodus Communications um, with the charter of uh, building their professional services organization. And so uh, you know, that was an exciting time. We got to work with companies building uh, infrastructure and running applications at internet scale. A lot of the dot-coms, a lot of um, large financial institutions, a lot of large e-commerce or brick and mortar uh, commerce companies moving to e-commerce. And we really learned how to run infrastructure at scale, which is exciting. And, uh, you know, fast forward eight or so years, uh, it was the cloud was being born. And we really saw the cloud technology as an opportunity to, to leverage the same efficiencies and the same techniques we were using back when it made sense for thousands or tens of thousands of servers uh, to, to much smaller workloads and for much uh, smaller companies. So we got super excited about that and started Foghorn in 2008 with the mission of helping people run mission critical workloads on public cloud infrastructure. And uh, probably a little too early, we beat our head against the wall for a little while <laughs> while people tried to figure out if security was going to work and compliance. Um, but ever since about 2013, 2014, we've sort of just been engulfed with some really great companies in the uh, gaming and SaaS and life sciences and healthcare space, leveraging the cloud platforms. That's great. Well, Andy, talk about, um, you know, what you're excited about the most for this year. It, you know, obviously we're starting to come out of, of a, a prolonged season uh, with the pandemic and it does seem to feel like things are, are beginning to loosen up. And so we're seeing companies really start to move forward in some really exciting ways. But as a leader of, of Evoke, talk about um, from your perspective, like what you're excited about. Yeah, to be honest, the most most excited I'm about is is the Foghorn acquisition uh, and really changing uh, changing what we're all about, how we're going to market. So, like you know, what we've learned from customers, and I think it was exaggerated yeah, during COVID and maybe even accelerated some of the trends, is uh, is is enterprise customers wanting kind of better visibility into their workloads, better cost management. I mean, there was a period back in, in kind of June of last year where everybody was preserving cash as much as they could because mm -hmm. you didn't really know what was going to happen next. Um, at the same time, trying to drive increased flexibility and not wanting to get locked in to a five-year or 10-year deal. And again, this is kind of really focused on, on the enterprise users. So uh, given that feedback and the conversations that we're having, 
it became pretty clear that an infrastructure only approach or even a forced infrastructure where we might be responding to an RFP and that decision to put something in COLA was made you know, months ago. Uh, and we weren't even part of that. And now it's an RFP and you're you know, hyper competitive with everybody in that local market. So we really wanted to change the conversation and leapfrog to the very front and start talking with CIOs and CTOs about digital transformation and really an application first approach as opposed to uh, force fitting the application onto the infrastructure mm -hmm. that you had in place. Uh, so getting to know Peter and the Foghorn team and their capabilities, talking to their, their customers, that's, that's what's got me the most excited for the, the year ahead and, and us finding a way to really break in and have different kinds of meaningful conversations with, with enterprise customers. Yeah, I think one of the takeaways, you know, f for for me at least, and and I think about companies like Evoke and and even Peter, what you've been doing with Foghorn for now, you know, 10, 15 years, it's like you have such a you have to have a partnership mentality because these relationships do last a long time, and they and it's not a complex or it's not an easy thing that, um, you know, you're helping solve for. It's complex and things change over time, and so. Peter, maybe uh, shed some light into what those conversations look like on the front end. You know, these enterprise customers that you all are sitting down with, the, the CIOs and CTOs you're talking with, you know, how are you helping them think through, you know, like the cloud adoption process or this hybrid approach that we see a lot of companies taking today? Sure, yeah. Uh, when, you know, when we're meeting with customers, we're definitely uh, trying to help come up with a really good infrastructure strategy. And historically, that really looked like uh, it was very simple, I think, for CIOs mm -hmm. to come up with a very simplified strategy, either um, all on-prem, all in colo, or then later all in on the cloud, on a single cloud provider. Uh, and you know, as, as, as things have changed, digital transformation is pushing business units to where their systems are driving top line revenue. They're getting more control. They need their applications to run performantly in the cloud. And oftentimes different applications need different infrastructures. So, but we see companies being required by their business to support multiple platforms, not necessarily to port the same workload from platform to platform, but to have access to the right platform for the right workload. And so coming up with a holistic strategy to enable all of those workloads uh, is, is definitely a little bit more complicated, but it yields much better results in the long term. Yeah, that makes sense. And Andy, from your standpoint, how do you feel like this changes the uh, evoke, you know, go to market strategy or just your offering in the market when you think about the competitive landscape that's out there? So one, at least from my standpoint, you know, we certainly the, the market's very competitive. And um, so just the ability to differentiate yourself, I think, is certainly valuable. But talk about how that allows you to really change uh, your approach um, moving forward. Yeah, I mean, being kind of completely transparent, out of, out of the gate, you know, Evoke was a pure retail co-location space and power. And it's really hard to differentiate uh, that way. So at, by, by acquiring Foghorn and rolling out this multi-generational infrastructure strategy, which is, again, focused on the application, not on, and, and a very infrastructure agnostic approach, uh, we think that puts us way ahead of many of our competitors from a thought leadership standpoint able to, again, sit down with a CIO, have Peter sit in front of them and, mm -hmm. and talk about a, their holistic needs for applications, whether it's cost, performance, security, uh, and not just doing it in a static way either, but thinking about how that's gonna evolve over time. Some workloads make a lot of sense to maybe develop and test in the cloud, but then bring back into co-location. We've seen that. Others make a lot more sense to migrate out of the data center and put into cloud permanently. Uh, so nothing mm -hmm. is kind of static. Everything is moving around. And if we can kind of you know, become that trusted advisor, that partner, as it relates to the applications, that's going to translate into just being really a differentiated kind of offering in the, in the marketplace. And, and one of the things I want to touch on is you talked about the importance of partnerships. Uh, we by no means intend to do this all alone. Uh, there is uh, so there's a huge channel community out there that we're you know, fully embraced and it's going to help us drive this message to the enterprise. Uh, and then even on top of that, we're not trying to become a, uh, a managed service provider. There are a lot of offerings in the middle between cloud and co-location. And, and we want to partner with those MSPs to deliver services to the enterprise that, that we're not intending to, to deliver. Allow them to be co-location customer of ours and then and sell to some of the same customers and, and provide a, a much kind of more uh, unified uh, experience. Yeah, 
That makes sense. And Peter, from your perspective, what are the most important things that enterprises can do to walk through that process effectively? Like how you've sat down with, you know, hundreds of probably co companies over the last several, you know, 10, 15 years. I mean, how have you seen companies get that right? Like, what do they do? What are the most important things they do to, to make sure they, they get it, get it done right? Yeah, there, there's definitely a huge skills gap uh, with the, this new infrastructure model. I think one of the, one of the best uh, things we've seen companies invest in is investing in a cloud center of excellence that allows their company to have a, a group that really understands cloud, all infrastructure that their different business units are going to use. And they're really, and you know, that team can be able to do things like make sure that uh, that we're do, we're doing security right, um, that we're maintaining our agility, and they can be a, a resource for the rest of the organization to ensure everybody's doing it right. Because in a DevOps model, there's a lot of development teams that are doing their own designs, doing their own operations. Uh, yeah, so so building that center of excellence has has yielded a lot of fruit, as well as that team being able to offer managed services. Um, shared services across their entire organization for things that uh, you can really get economies on, like you know security, uh, SIM, and and log aggregation, and monitoring and management. That's great. Well, I think we have seen the enterprise market certainly start to um, do more over the last, you know, I would say three to six months as we track demand at Data Center Hawk in different markets and and the work that we're doing. It does seem like. Uh, maybe companies that had taken a, a pause during uh, last year are, are certainly starting to begin to make decisions a bit, or it feels like that. Are, are you all feeling the same way? Do you see that with the customers, Andy, that you're speaking with, maybe legacy customers or prospects? I mean, are you starting to feel that moving forward in a positive direction? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the level of activity is, is really picking up pretty dramatically, and, and we've seen that both at Evoke, but even at, at Foghorn as well. Uh, where a lot of their enterprise customers are, are kicking up uh, projects that had kind of been put on hold during, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, during the, the uh, diligence period for Foghorn, one of the things that really blew me away were the customer interviews. So we talked to their top hmm. customers, including you know, the, the tech unicorns that, that went public, one of the most successful IPOs ever, a global gaming company, a global investment bank, a uh, uh, you know, huge pharmaceutical company. So all of these large enterprises kept on talking about the, the team at Foghorn, not only in terms of, of just kind of pure expertise on executing, but really on thought leadership. They're able to bring you know, these hundreds of, of other use cases from other enterprises. And while those specific use cases might be, might be different, the CIOs are facing a lot of the same challenges on, mm. on migrating versus transforming, uh, on, kind of, on the, the importance of security and cost optimization. So having these large enterprises kind of validate the, the Foghorn story was, was really cool. And then, you know, fast forward a month and starting to see those same customers put in bigger and bigger uh, work orders or service orders uh, sure. is, is pretty cool as well. Yeah, I bet. That's a, a, an immediate uh, ROI is really fun to see uh, on anything, especially uh, like that. So I, I totally get it. Peter, from your standpoint, what are you most excited about, um, you know, just this kind of new point, this new opportunity um, to, you know, be on the Evoke team and be part of what they're doing? Yeah, we're really excited. You know, we over the last five years, it's obviously a hot space, and we had a lot of different investors and strategics inquiring about us. And uh, what we loved about Evoke, first off, the management team, and then all the people we've gotten to work with so far, um, not just is their vision aligned with us, but uh, culture and people, they've just been great to work with. So we're excited about that. We're excited about being able to expand our influence into a much larger customer base, which is tough to do when you're a small company with a limited sales and marketing budget. Um, we're excited about the fact that, you know, we've, we've always been an infrastructure agnostic company and that was in the form of being multi-cloud from an expertise standpoint. Sure. Um, but we've got tons of data center uh, DNA in us and we're excited now to round out that solution set with a, with a, a infrastructure with a colo provider that has the same vision as we do around, um, around developing customer centric solutions. Well, Andy, what's your focus, you know, moving forward now that, that the acquisition has been made and you've, you've been able to um, add a key piece and, and a, you know, a differentiator as it relates to the Evoke offering, how, you know, how do you um, think that positions you in the future and, and what gets you excited about that? 
Yeah, so uh, one is to re- very excited to kind of roll this out to both uh, both the channel uh, and, and, and partner community, roll it out to our existing customer base. Uh, we've seen, like all co-location providers have seen workloads move to cloud. Uh, and yeah. I'd rather be, much rather be a part of that, uh, a part of that to, that journey for our customers than kind of watching it just just disappear and, and, leave, and leave our data center. So I'm excited, for, especially the next six months, to really get it out there to help build the credibility that, that Foghorn brings uh, for these conversations, and then to, to really allow our sales team to go to go wild and, and start driving a lot of this. I mean, on day one, I mean, just to be clear, we're, we're a data center company through and through. This is meant to, to kind of augment what, what we can do and our intentions to buy and acquire and expand data centers is, is as strong as ever. Uh, but with, again, with Foghorn, it changes that, that message and that conversation and really allow our sales team to start go out there and really drive a lot of assessments. I'd say on, on day one, mm. the key isn't kind of, we're, we're not going to solve everybody's problems. We're not, can't, not going to overpromise something we can't deliver, but allowing the Foghorn team to come into an enterprise, just do a holistic assessment of their, of their priorities of their applications of where they might have some, some problems. That alone is going to pay a lot of dividends for our customers. And I think establish us as that, as that trusted partner. Yeah, well, Andy and Peter, thanks so much for jumping on and doing this. Congratulations on uh, this new chapter. And, you know, from my standpoint, it's really fun to see companies that evolve as the customer needs change to make sure that they can help uh, the, you know, customers that they have or or future customers really uh, work through this. Uh, digital transformation journey. That's what it is. You know, it's, it is a, it changes over time. And if you're able to walk with customers along that journey, um, it, you know, there's good things that can happen. So congratulations and look forward to hearing about the success down the road. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks.